Hello, this is Dr. Grande. Welcome to my video on identifying outliers using Microsoft Excel. I have some fictitious data here on this worksheet. You see I have two variables. I have ID, so these would be the ID numbers for 40 participants. And I have a post-test. So these would be post-test scores corresponding to these participants. So what we want to be able to do here is to highlight those post-test scores that are outliers. So first we're going to have to make a few calculations. We're going to need to know the population standard deviation and the mean. I'm also going to calculate the minimum and maximum values as well as the range. So for the population standard deviation, it's equal sign STDEVP. And then the range would be B2 all the way down through B41. So we can see that is 10.45. That is the population standard deviation. The mean is calculated using the average function. So it'll be average and I'm going to select B2. This time I'm going to use control shift down arrow to select the entire range I want. And click enter. And you can see the mean, the average score for the post test variable is 43.75. Then a the minimum value is calculated using min, MIN. and then the maximum value using max. And again, the same range, B2 through B41. And the range is calculated by subtracting the minimum value from the maximum value. So that'd be equal sign, maximum value minus minimum value. You can see the range here is 57. So with these data, we can calculate what's called the z-score, which is a standardized score that has a mean of 0 and a standard deviation of 1. And having access to the z-score that corresponds to each post-test score will allow us to identify outliers. So to calculate the z-score, we're going to use the standardized function. And you can see it asks for three arguments. The first is x, which is the score, and we know that in this, in this case it's b2. Then it asks for the mean, which is going to be 43.75. So I'm clicking on this, and I'm going to click F4 to make that an absolute reference, because I don't want that to change when I autofill this down the column. Then we have comma, and then standard deviation, I'm going to select that value, 10.45, cell I4, and I'm going to press F4 again because I want that to be an absolute reference as well. So I press Enter. You can see the first z-score is negative 0 0.26. That's the z-score that corresponds with the score 41. So I'm going to autofill the standardized function all the way down so I have all the z-scores. So now that we have the z-scores, we need to decide what z-score is going to represent an outlier. And there are two common ranges for outliers. One is negative 2.5 to 2.5z, and the other is negative 2.68 to 2.68z. Where I have this outlier value, the cell set up for that, I only need to put in the absolute value, not the range. So I'm going to go with 2.68. So an outlier will be defined now by any value that has a z-score greater than 2.68 or less than negative 2.68. Or put another way, 
any z-score that has an absolute value greater than 2.68. So at this point, we can look at the z-scores and we can see those that exceed 2.68 or are below negative 2.68. Or we can set up a conditional formatting that will highlight the cell for us, which in large data sets is a particularly helpful method. So first I'm going to select B2 and control shift down arrow. So I have B2 all the way down to B41. I'm going to go up to conditional formatting, which is under the home ribbon. Conditional formatting, and I want a new rule. So a new formatting rule. You can see there's several options here. I want to use a formula to determine which cells to format. So before I put the actual formula in, I'm going to set the format. So I want the format, I want the font for the format to be white. So I'm going to set the color, which is now set to automatic. I'm going to make that white. And then the fill, it's the background color, I'm going to set that to red. And take a look at that. So you can see a preview. That's what the formatting for an outlier will look like. Now let's take a look at the formula we use. So we're going to use the first cell that we selected. So that's B2. So the corresponding z-score is C2. So I'm going to put in equal sign absolute value, which is ABS, of C2. is greater than, and I'm going to select the I10 cell, which is where I've typed in my outlier. And notice this comes up automatically as an absolute reference. I'm going to leave it that way. I'm going to click OK. And you can see that even though I set it based on B2, I use C2, which is one column to the right, since I selected the, the whole region, all the post-test scores, it affects the whole region. So right away we can see that 72 is an outlier. The score 72 is an outlier. has a Z of 2.7. And 15 is an outlier, as it has a Z of negative 2.74. And if I scroll down to view the rest of these data, I see that those are the only two outliers based on the outlier z-score uh, absolute value exceeding 2.68 that I entered here. So this is dynamic, so you can change the z-score just by inputting a different value into the cell I10. I hope you found this video on identifying outliers using Excel to be helpful. As always, if you have any questions or concerns, feel free to contact me and I'll be happy to assist you.